Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here. Today's video, I haven't done in so long. Well, that is literally not true at all. I literally did a book shopping in a haul last month, but this one's a little bit different because it's just a book haul. And this one's particularly special because these are all the books that I got for my birthday or just bought for myself to treat myself for my birthday or just maybe accumulated over the weeks that were after my birthday. So yeah, am I proud of this? No, I'm really not because there is a lot of books here. Okay, there's 15 plus books and I honestly was gonna do more because there was like a sale going on type thing and then I figured out that when you bulk order books off of Amazon, you get like a bulk order discount. I got $18 off. So then I ordered another one, of course, and I got like $23 off and I had to, I had to tell myself to stop. Anyways, the book deals were really tempting for me and I'm glad that I stopped when I did. I think I'm also gonna go on a book buying ban in March. There's not really a lot of new releases or anything coming out in March but in April we have quite a few exciting new releases and then the summer we have a lot of new releases. I feel like I don't know why in the later half of the year there's a lot more new releases than there has been during the beginning half at least for me anyways. I only have one new release in this pile. Other ones are just books that I've been wanting to read for a while that I just didn't have. So let's just go ahead and start off. I think we're gonna begin with the books that I actually got for my birthday like as a gift. Most of these were also technically gifts because I got them with like my birthday money and I also used some of my Christmas money because I was kind of like saving up to treat myself on my birthday. So it's not really like I went that ham because this was all like money that was given to me as a gift. So technically it's fine, right? I'm gonna pretend that you said yes. Anyways, the first book that I got was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This will be my first V.E. Schwab book and I got this from my friend Brooke. Love you, Brooke. I'm really excited to read this because this book has kind of had like a resurgence in popularity. I didn't even tell Brooke that like I wanted this book. This book wasn't even really on my radar. But I think so many people have been putting it off for so long that they've finally been reading it because it's been on their TBR for so long and they just wanted to like get it off the TBR. And I have heard nothing but great reviews about it since everybody has been reading it recently. I've also heard nothing about great reviews from the people who like read it a long time ago. It's basically about a girl named Addie LaRue. Who would I guess? And all I really know is that she makes some sort of deal with like a god in order to live for a long time, but he takes away the fact that people can remember her at all. So she's literally invisible and then she lives for like 300 years. And then something happens. I don't really know. I'm probably gonna say that about a lot of books in this video. Um, besides the brief synopsis that I give, I don't really know too much about these books. A lot of the reasons why I want to read them is because a lot of my favorite book creators who have very similar tastes as me have recommended them. I've seen so many people sob specifically at the end of this book, which makes me very nervous. So I'm a little nervous at how long this will be sitting on my TBR. I feel like I have to be in the perfect exact mood for it. So hopefully this won't sit on the TBR too long and hopefully I'll be in a crying mood soon. And by the way, this is more of like a fantasy-esque book, I'm pretty sure, because it involves like gods. Also let me know in the comments down below which book out of all of these books that I'm about to show you I should read first or which ones you're most excited for me to read because maybe I'll read them in a reading vlog. Okay, and then these next ones are the books that Luke got me. The first one he got me was The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. You guys all know. I love and adore Lynn Painter. This is an adult romance by her, and it's actually the second in an interconnected standalone series. I have the first one right here. It's Mr. Wrong Number, and how it's connected is this is the brother of the main character in that book. This book is basically about two people who are on the dating apps, and they meet, and then they're like, mm, I don't really like you like that, but they're friends, and then they decide to be each other's like wing person, and then I assume there's some type of like wager or bet going on because it's called the love wager who would have bought. I'm a genius. But yeah, I've just heard such great things about this. I've heard it's very cutesy, very fun, and I love Lynn Painter's rom-coms, as I've already said, as you guys know, because I literally beat that topic to death. And I feel like it's just gonna be the perfect, short, fun palette cleanser read. It's literally less than 300 pages. And also one of my goals this year was to finish all of Lynn Painter's backlist, and I'm getting pretty close to that. So I'm really excited to read this. And then the next book he got me. Are you ready? As you guys know, I have already finished Akatar. Literally posted a video for every single book in that series, so check that out if you haven't yet. And I'm currently about halfway through-ish of Throne of Glass. So excited to finish that series. So, the next one up is obviously Crescent City. And so, he got me the first Crescent City book, House of Earth and Blood, but it is the Barnes & Noble Special Edition. Are you kidding me? Like, are you joking? This is absolutely Stunning. I like how it just looks so clean on the front. There's no like writing or anything. These are gonna look so gorgeous on my shelves I'm so excited to display them. They also like flap out a little bit I don't really think that it adds too much, but I don't know. It's kind of cool And then since he got me this one, I was like, well, 
I need the second one, of course, to be matching, because how could I how could I not do that? So then I went ahead and with my Barnes and Noble gift card, a part of my order, I bought the second Crescent City special edition, which is House of Sky and Breath. And this one, I think I like this one better than this one personally. I just think it looks so cool. And then on this flap, it has this full wing. I am so excited for these to be on my bookshelves. I am so excited to eventually get to reading these after I'm done with Throne of Glass. And I didn't buy the third one, even though it was out around the time that my birthday was. But I just figured I should wait since I'm like not even ready to pick these up yet. But since these are special editions, I thought I might as well get them now. I'm so excited. I know literally nothing about this series. I think the only thing I actually do know, so scratch that, I do know something, is that it's an urban fantasy. So it's in like modern day, like they have like technology and phones and kind of stuff. And I've never read an urban fantasy, so kind of nervous, kind of excited. The sheer length of them is also very nerve-wracking, but I think it's gonna be great. Yay. I also wanted to mention I have two books that are not here yet, and they're both from that Barnes & Noble order that I was talking about. As you guys very well know, Powerless, this baby right here, was my favorite book of 2023 and is one of my favorite books of all time. Love the series, so excited to continue it. The second one comes out in July. Like, I... You will not see me for the days after that comes out. Like, I'm going to be off the grid. Okay, like, that is serious business. I'm going to fly through that book. I absolutely loved the first one. And I never shut up about it, obviously. And I also don't really have, like, a ton of special editions. So I figured I should treat myself a little bit and get a special edition of my favorite book. So I ended up getting the Barnes & Noble special edition of Powerless. It's so pretty. So on the front of this one, there are purple flowers, which are called forget-me-nots, and it actually has like a significance, I guess, in the book, which is just so cute, and I love it so much. So on this one, they're purple, but on this one, they're obviously bright pink. I was like, oh, this is stunning. I have to have it. And then there's also bonus content. So of course I had to have it. Anything about Kai and Peyton? I need, of course. So I am so incredibly excited to display that on my shelf. Sadly, it got back ordered. Um, and isn't gonna be here until March 4th. And is currently February 16th. I'm a little upset about that. But you know what? The day that it comes, it'll be like a little Christmas birthday gift to me. And I'm so excited to open it. And then also on the theme with Powerless, I wanted to get free shipping because girl math, like if I don't get free shipping, it's like I'm literally paying more in the end. And I was gonna get this book anyways, of course. So I ended up also getting the Barnes & Noble special edition of the novella that's coming out in April, which is called Powerful. This is Adina's story in the Powerless books. Also, if you don't know anything about Powerless, a quick synopsis is basically there's two types of people in society. There's elites who have powers and there's ordinaries who don't. There's also a Hunger Games trial s type thing, a lot of romance. There's tons of balls, tons of romantic tension, tons of who did this to you literally three times. Such an incredible book. You must read it. And like I said, this one is about Adina, who is Peyton, who is the main character in Powerless or one of the main characters best friend and she's getting her own novella and I'm so excited for more Powerless content okay and then I don't know if it was like for Valentine's Day or if it was just like for no reason in particular but Target brought back a book sale if you're ever looking for a good Burks Burke sale what? If you're ever looking for a good book sale, Target has a lot of great ones. I know last year they did a lot of buy two, get one free deals, and hopefully those come back around because I love those. But sadly, this book deal ended on February 14th, aka Valentine's Day, so sorry. But I did post this on my Instagram, so if you're ever curious about like book deals or anything like that, I got you. You should follow me on there. Anyways, the deal was buy one, get one 50% off. And I was like, this is such a great deal. Of course, I have to buy some books. So I ended up getting four books from Target. The first one is a very exciting new release that came out. I think it was February 6th. And it is Bride by none other than Allie Hazelwood. This is her first venture into fantasy, fantasy romance, romantic kind of thing, I think. Obviously, I haven't read it yet, so I don't really know. And it has vampires and werewolves, which... If you know me, The Vampire Diaries is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So I am so excited for this. Her books are always just so fun and easy to read. And I just love her writing so much. So I'm so excited to read this. Hopefully I'll be getting those in February. And then along with that, I ended up getting a book that I've kind of been wanting to read for a long time. This is at least an author that I've been wanting to read for a long time. And it's Alone With You in the Ether by Olive e. Blake. This is also a pretty short book. I think it's under 200 pages or not 200 pages, 300. Yeah, it's only 262 pages, which is insane. I mean, it does look kind of small. I think this is like a literary fiction romance book. It does say a love story at the bottom, but I think it's like a very realistic love story. Like not all like cheesy, rom com -y, happy and stuff like that. A lot of people say that this reminds them of Normal People by Sally Rooney. The main reason why I got this is because I've just heard great things about Olive Blake's writing and I've heard great things about this book in particular, but her writing supposedly like very lyrical and beautiful and I've just really been enjoying that kind of writing lately. It is literally art whenever authors, like books themselves are art, but whenever authors write like that, like it's just in a whole nother world of book art. And also 
for my 2024 TBR. I wanted to finally read an Olivia Blake book just because I've heard great things. So I'm very excited about this one. And then the other two books that I got from the Target deal are a part of a series that I just recently started, which you're probably like, Katie, what are you talking about? You just recently started. This series has been out forever. I know, it's taking me forever. I ended up buying the second and third books in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I literally just couldn't pass it up. Like, buy one, get one 50% off. These were both like $9. So I literally got two books for less than $20. That is unheard of. The second one is called Good Girl, Bad Blood. And the third one is called As Good as Dead. These are both by Holly Jackson, who wrote the first one, of course. I really love the first one. If you don't really know anything about it, it's basically just a YA mystery thriller series. And if you're a frequent watcher on my channel, you know that I get scared of quite literally everything so I'm trying to dip my toes into mystery and the way that I found is the easiest way to do that is by reading YA mystery thrillers. So yeah I'm super excited to continue this series. The first one was such a quick fast-paced read so I'm expecting these to be kind of the same. I know there's a novella too that I saw at Target but I was kind of like eh, I don't really need that right now. I don't even know if I'll end up reading that. And then the last place that I got everything was Amazon. That's where I was talking about the bulk order thing where I got like the $23 off. I was like uh -huh, okay so what you're telling me is that the next time I buy books, I'm not gonna buy them like one at a time. I'm just gonna buy like 10 to 15 books at once, which is honestly dangerous. And you shouldn't have told me that, Amazon, even though you didn't really tell me it just kind of happened. But you shouldn't have done that to my car because it's basically saying that if I only buy like one or two, I'm losing money. Whenever I buy more than that, I'm like literally like I'm getting money, I'm saving money, technically. Anyways, I got quite a few books that I'm very excited about from there. The first one being The Storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this. This is a literary fiction with a subplot of romance. Haley Pham is the first person that I saw talk about this book. This is a five star read for her and I don't really know too much about it. I just know that it's basically about this guy's life and it's just a very wholesome, nice, fun read. So I'm just like very excited for it. I've wanted to get a lot more into literary fiction too lately and I've heard nothing but great things about Gabrielle Zevin. Along with that, you guys probably know her better from Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which was I think the Goodreads 2023 like best book of the year or like reader's choice book or something like that. I saw so many people read this book in 2023 so I am so excited to like finally understand what the hype is about. The font is so small love that but anyways this book is also kind of like a literary fiction subplot of romance book and all i really know is that they are two college kids that knew each other from childhood but they kind of like lost touch and then they become like video game developers together which is kind of cool i've never really read anything like that before so i'm very interested and intrigued i've heard nothing but amazing things about this book and nothing but amazing things about this book and nothing but amazing things about gabrielle seven so i don't know i'm really excited to read these whenever i'm in more of like a literary fiction mood and then i also got a nonfiction which I know is shocking but this book is one of Steph Borer's favorite books and I've just been loving watching her vlogs and all of her book videos on YouTube lately and so I was like I just I just have to know I just have to read it and it is everything I know about love by Dolly Alderton and normally if you look at me and you're like Katie here's a nonfiction book to read I'd be like I'm literally gonna never get to that that's gonna sit on my shelf for years upon years and I just I'll never read it. It'll end up being on hold eventually. But this book just intrigues me so much. One, just because I've heard amazing things and glowing reviews about it. But two, just because I've heard that this is basically like her story about what she's learned in her 20s. Because obviously you can see like things are crossed off on the title. Like parties, dates, friends, jobs, life are all crossed off. So I think it's just about her like life experience. I think this is actually a memoir. No, it's definitely a memoir. So it's just about all of her like life experiences in her 20s and just like learning about things and all of that kind of stuff. And some of my favorite books, specifically I'm thinking about Happy Place by Emily Henry down here, talk so much about friendship in such a deep way and about how friendships change as you grow up. So I feel like this will interest me a lot. And I love obviously hearing about dating and romance and all that kind of stuff. Even though I'm engaged, I just love hearing people's opinions on dating and just like life in general. I really hope that I'm gonna get in my memoir era. And hopefully if I like this, I'll end up reading Dolly Elderton's other books. I think she has another like memoir book and then I know she has a few fiction books too. I think she just came out with a new release actually. But I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this one by her. I really hope I like it. The next book is The Heartbreak House Share by Emily Merrill. I haven't heard a ton of things about this book. This book was recommended to me by Rachel Catherine. I heard her mention it in a vlog one time and she was kind of talking about the same thing how everything I know about love is kind of like for girls in their 20s and kind of about friendship and learning and just kind of all that kind of stuff. So I've just been really into books like that just because the books that I have read, like I said, that are like that I've really enjoyed. So this is basically about a girl who gets 
broken up with. As you can tell, there's our break in the title. And that leads to her living with a bunch of other girls. And I think it's kind of like Sister of the Traveling Pants. Is that what it's called? I've literally watched them. I don't know why I'm acting like I don't know what they are. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. That's what they're called. I think it's giving that kind of vibes, but without pants. I'm just really interested to see what I think about it just from reading the back. It seems like, um... There might be a fake dating trope in here, which you guys know I'm literally obsessed with. I would probably say fake dating is like my favorite trope. And since not a lot of other people have read this, I'm really interested to see what I think and hopefully I can give you guys a new fun recommendation. Okay, and then if you guys watched my winter reading vlog, I ended up reading One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick, which is the first book in the Shepherd's King duology that kind of got, I wouldn't say blown up to like fourth wing or like divine rivals hype on BookTok, but it definitely got talked a lot about on BookTok. And a lot of people were saying that it was their favorite fantasy read of 2023. So I read the first one in that video. So go check that out if you want to see me read it, but I absolutely adored it. It was really, really good. If you're looking for like an entry level fantasy and you haven't really read a lot, yet highly recommend and i'm mentioning that book of course because i got the second one which is like the end of the duology and it's called two twisted crowns and the reason why i say it's kind of like a great entry level well one it doesn't really have as much romance as you will be expecting some people say it's a romantic i wouldn't say that i would say it's a fantasy with a like big subplot of romance it's not as much romance as like powerless has in it or akatar has in it but nonetheless the magic system is just so interesting and unique i've really never read anything like it but it's still so easy to understand and the main character in these books is named elspeth and she kind of has like this sickness in this world and normally whenever kids get the sickness they like like they're done you know but her parents end up saving her and she kind of has like magic and that kind of magic is like not allowed like the king doesn't really like that the only kind of magic that the king does like like are these things called providence cards which are kind of like tarot cards somebody described it as that and i don't know why my brain like didn't really click that like resemblance but it truly is kind of like those and you touch a providence card and you get the power so there's 12 different types of power i'm not really sure what to expect from this one considering the cliffhanger the first one left off on but i am very excited and i highly recommend this duology even though i haven't even read the second one yet but definitely read the first one to be determined on this one okay and then the last four books that i got very excited about. They're all a part of a series that I have already mentioned quite a bit over my channel for the past few videos that you've seen this year. And also I've already mentioned it in this video and you can also see them right there. They're literally like right there. I already had the first four books in the Throne of Glass series. I figured I might as well have the rest whenever I'm ready to get to them. So I got book five, Queen of Shadows, book six, Empire Storms, book seven, Tower of Dawn, and book eight, the final book, Kingdom of Ash. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad that this is like such a floppy book that makes me so happy though. If you don't know anything about this series, it's amazing and wonderful. I've read the first three so far, so excited to continue it. And they're also by Sarah J Maas who wrote the Actar series, which is a lot more popular than Throne of Glass, but I honestly think Throne of Glass might end up being my favorite. Obviously I don't know yet, but I love the Agatar series, but I am just eating the Throne of Glass series up so far. I'm so excited. The only thing I'm gonna share about it is basically it is about a Salassin Salassin? Uh, an assassin named Selena Sardothian. And you just kind of like follow her through her adventures. There is trials in it. So it's kind of like Hunger Games-esque with the trials. A lot of fantasy books have trials, honestly. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to give anything away. But it is incredible. I'm enjoying it so much so far and I'm so excited to get into this. And even though I'm not done with it, highly recommend this series already. All right, guys, those are all the books that I have bought recently. I am so excited to read all of these eventually whenever I am ready or in the mood for them. Let me know in the comments down below what book you're most excited to see me read or if you have any thoughts on these books or anything like that looking at them now i can't even decide which one i want to read first so please help me and don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and comment down below the disco ball emoji so i know that you made it to the very end okay i think that's it i hope you guys are having a wonderful day and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys hello everybody oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Ugh! <sighs>